all about pendant lighting. I'm a massive fan of lighting and I think it can make a massive difference in your renovation. However, often beautiful or bespoke and creative pendant lighting can be a little bit cost prohibitive. So I'm gonna show you today how you can make an original, one of a kind pendant light using some simple stuff that's available from most hardware stores. Now to make this pendant light, we need a shade. So I have actually gone for a basket. This one's available from Kmart. I think it was $8. And I'm gonna be turning this basket into a shade. We need naturally the lighting mechanism. You can get these from most electrical or lighting supplies and you can even order them online. You need a drill with an appropriate size drill bit. And the part that is going to make it bespoke, original and different is how we are going to paint it. And at the end, we naturally need a beautiful light bulb to light it up. Now to turn this basket into a shade, I need to really carefully remove these handles. So just with a pair of scissors, just delicately, very delicately snap off, snap off, cut off these handle fixings. then slide the handle through. The next thing we need to do is create a hole in the top of the basket to be able to pass this cord through. So all of these cords come with a little mechanism at the top. So this one's quite small, we'll more than likely be able to fit that through that hole. With some of them, if they are just a little bit larger, you can simply disconnect it and get an electrician to just reconnect those little points for you. Now when you're drilling the hole in the, what will become the top of the shade to house your wiring um, and your cord for your pendant, make sure that it's slow and steady. Remember this is a bumpy natural fiber and we don't want to be making this hole any bigger than we actually need. And there we have it. Just big enough to fit my pinky through. Given this is a natural weave, what often happens if people wanted to paint part of it is it's very hard to get a straight line because this is a lumpy natural weave product. So what I'm going to do instead is a dipping technique. And you could either choose to dip the top end of your pendant. So in this case, we're going to be having a beautiful shade of warm white around the top, or you could choose to dip the bottom end of your pendant. Either way, it's going to look amazing. So I'm actually using here some leftover paint that I have. It's a Torbman's Injure, and it's what I've used on another project. But I, I do get quite upset when paint goes to waste, when there's a pile of paint sitting in someone's garage, and it, and it can and does go off with time. And so I love to be able to see what I can use the paint for. Now, as I mentioned, this is a gorgeous white. I'm actually going to, um, I've already stirred it up, must stir no matter how you're choosing to apply it. I'm going to pour it into this tub and then dip the basket. So you only fill it up as much as you need the paint to be covering. Now for the water, just to water this paint down just a little bit. Have to make sure you mix this very thoroughly. The last thing you want is different levels of opaque paint on your pendant. I would naturally never recommend you watering down paints um, from their original purpose if you were using them, for example, to you know paint a wall. Um, however, um, in this circumstance, when we're using leftover paints for crafting purposes, uh, I'm totally okay with it. Okay, our paint's nice and watery, basket in hand. Remembering I am dipping the top of the pendant. So make sure there's no dust or little bits and bobs hanging out. And let's get ready to dip it in. Now as you dip it in, I want you to go really slow and steady. Only submerge it to the point that you want the paint covered. Let it sit there for just a little bit. If you want a nice organic, uneven look, you can even squeeze your basket left, right, and it will give you the effect of little waves sort of lapping on the sides of, of the cane pendant. Now once you're done, bring it up, tap it off, be really patient because the last thing you want is to flip it up 
and have runs down the side of your pendant. Now that this is touch dry and only just, I have threaded through the pre-drill hole um, the mechanism and got it back through the shroud. Now all that's left to do is work out exactly what height inside of this pendant that you want your light sitting. And once you've worked that out, it is as simple as tying a very loose, not tight, very loose knot in that cord and then pulling it through. Now it's always worth checking depending on the globe that you're using and the wattage of the globe that you're using and any heat that it emits that it's going to be okay with this natural fiber and it's not going to be a fire hazard. So make sure you always are looking to use a really, really low, uh, I guess low wattage globe. So we're not going to be emitting too much heat and we're not going to get ourselves into trouble. Now these beautiful big globes, they're available pretty much anywhere nowadays. You can get them from Coles, you can get them from Target, pretty much anywhere. So let's just screw that in and make sure that the knot is in the right position. So you just have my globe at the bottom of my pendant. Now this is one variety of how you can dip and create custom pendants. You could use wire baskets, bigger baskets, you could use cane bowls, timber bowls, you name it, the sky is the limit. With these mechanisms, these pendant mechanisms available everywhere nowadays, it means that you can literally find something that catches your eye. You can dip it, roll it, paint it, print it, whatever you might like, and install it as your most beautiful pendant light that's truly yours. Now all that's left to do is give the electrician a call and get this one installed. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you're following me on Instagram to see my latest design and Renault inspiration. You can find me at Naomi Findlay Official or click the link in my description. See you soon.